Hello. So now that we've covered what we're going to be learning in this lab, using logarithms to linearize data and z-tests, what experiments are we going to do to develop these skills? Well, in this lab, we're going to be using one of the simplest physical systems that we can possibly think of, something that's been studied since the time of Galileo, a mass hanging from a string, also known as a pendulum. And what we're going to be looking for is trying to determine the relationship between the pendulum's period, how long it takes to go down and come all the way back, and its length. All right, so you can see that a longer pendulum has a longer period relative to a shorter pendulum goes back and forth much more quickly. Now, the basics of the relationship is that T is equal to L over G raised to some power, where again, T is the period, how long it takes to go all the way down and back, measured in seconds. Length is the length of your pendulum measured in meters. And G is the gravitational field, uh, 9.8 uh, newtons per kilogram. You can see that like Kleebler's law, this relationship takes the form of a power law. The period is related to a constant, g, and the length, l, all raised to some power, p. Our goal is to measure p, determine the power of this power law. Before we get started, there's some terminology that we're going to use throughout this lab that we're just going to introduce right now. The first is oscillations. So when I say oscillations, measuring the period for a single down and back, single oscillation, is probably a little tough. It's, it's pretty quick. So what makes more sense is to do several oscillations, say five, one, two, three, four, five, time how long that takes, and then divide by five, and that'll give you a period you'll have to determine how many oscillations to use and we'll guide you through how to make that decision. We'll also talk about the number of trials. Now, in order to reduce the statistical uncertainty, you're probably gonna wanna do several trials, each of multiple oscillations. For example, you may do three trials of five oscillations each. So one, two, three, four, five get a period from that those data. Second trial, one, two, three, four, five. That would give you a second period. And then for a third trial, one, two, three, four, five. You know, so you've now done three trials of five oscillations each. From there, you can get a mean and a standard deviation and start to get a handle on your statistical uncertainties. And then of course, you're gonna to have to, in order to fit your data, you're gonna to have to do different lengths for your pendulum, right? So a couple of different lengths. And again, you're gonna to have to decide how many different lengths to do, how many trials to do, how many oscillations per trial to do. And we'll help you out, but you're gonna to have to make these decisions. So now you know the experiment, know what you're trying to do, let's move on. 